Uh, I'd like to call to order the uh, meeting of the Jenkintown Borough Council, April 24th, 2017. Um, welcome, everyone. Nice to see you at Full House. And um, Mayor Foley, would you be us in the flag? I'd like to this to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, Vice President Bunker, here. Council McCarthy. Here. Council Connors phoned and said he'd be running a half hour late. Second. Council Farrell. Here. Council Danmar. Excuse. President Baker. Here. Council Weaver. Here. Council Golden. Here. Council McLaughlin. Here. Councilor Young. Present. Councilor Whitney. Here. Councilor Sotizia. Here. Madam President, you have a call. Thank you very much. Um, I'd like to hear a motion of approval of minutes. Sorry. Is there a second? Second. Are there any comments or questions? All right, all those in favor of approving the minutes, I'll say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. All right, uh, now, Councillor um, Bunker, would you do the approval of payrolls? Mm -hmm. President, I move that we approve payrolls be on March 30th and April 13th in the amount of $157,359.94 and invoices totaling $178,398.19. Do I hear a second? Please. Do I hear a second? Second. Do I hear a second? Second. Any questions or comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, thank you very much. Um, at this point, I would like to make a public comment uh, that I've prepared this, this afternoon. Um, I'm really pleased to see so many people coming out and to um, see if you have interest in what's going on in the community. And um, we're really happy to have members of the community in attendance. Um, I want to note the presence of a camera in the back of the room, and I assume that this is being posted live on Facebook. That's correct. Um, and so I, I just want people to know that because you are being videotaped and it's streaming live. Um, and so I also want to note that we will only take comments from people who are physically present in the room. So we're not taking comments from people who come in from Facebook. Um, I also wanted to say I've been tracking postings on blogs and Facebooks, mm -hmm. and I want to remind us all that um, civil dialogue is an important part of the democratic process, and the Jenkintown residents and community members um, are welcome and encouraged to come and stand and ask questions and give their views on topics at borough council meetings, and we welcome that. Um, council has a full schedule of committee meetings that are more work-type sessions, and citizens are invited to be part of those <coughs> meetings as well. Um, if you have a question about which committee your topic fits in, you can phone either the manager or myself or committee chair and find out, like if it's unclear to you which topic, which committee you might attend. Um, I wanted to remind the public that we are a group of volunteers. All of us are residents. Um, there are three from each ward plus our mayor. And none of us is looking for fame or fortune in doing this work. We're doing, we are performing community service. Oops, sorry about my phone. Um, there's no monetary gain, and in some cases it actually costs us money to be here if we have to pay for babysitters uh, for young children. All 13 of us are people who have been chosen or who have been asked to step into this role of leadership and we all know that when people do step into leadership, they're taking a risk. Um, we're putting ourselves forward. Um, we open ourselves up to criticism. We, sometimes we are attacked, not, not physically, um, but leaders are often targeted or slandered, belittled, belittled and, um, and other people kind of try to put leaders down. 
Um, and so I want to remind us all here tonight that um, we are doing the best we can for the borough of Denkentown. Um, we are looking at the big picture and we are also paying attention to detail. And that we are not perfect, we do make mistakes, and we are trying as best we can. I think it's important to remember that we are your friends and your neighbors and sometimes family. And um, what we have in common is the welfare of Denkentown. Um, we have a fiduciary responsibility to hire a borough manager, which we have done, and the borough manager runs the day-to-day -day business. And we are really fortunate to have a manager who is a dedicated professional, who's on call 24-7, who is uh, sort of a jack of all trades and a very fine collaborator, and who also wants the best for the borough. Um, council doesn't manage the manager, but we monitor and we give the big picture direction. Um, I also wanted to say a word about right to know requests. Um, we've been getting a lot of right to know requests and these requests do take up staff time. Um, they take up the time with the manager and finance director and oft sometimes even our legal staff. So um, the, the borough incurs costs when we have um, an inordinate number of them. Um, that is not to say that the council is interested in keeping things quiet. No, quite to the contrary, we want to share information. So all, as much as possible, we share on our website. We have documents that are available at the desk. All of us are available by phone and by email to answer questions. Um, and um, all of us have to um, disclose, um, do a financial disclosure form, which we are you know, welcome to share with people who are interested. I know myself, I have nothing to hide. And I will be happy to share with any resident who wants to see my financial disclosure form. I ask that you just call me or email me directly. Um, I also want to remind us that the Pennsylvania Municipal Code allows the borough, uh, when the borough is dealing with questions that have to do with personnel matters, litigation, or real estate, that sometimes we must have those conversations in executive session because of privacy issues and because when we're dealing with real estate, sometimes there are sensitive uh, matters to discuss. So with all that being said, um, in a few moments, we will open up the floor to public comment um, and, um, and questions. Before we do that, um, we have decided to change the order of business um, because we have a court reporter here and in the interest of saving a little bit of, um, of our precious funds, we are going to go into um, public, adjourn this meeting and go into a public hearing. Is that, do I have that right? No, just make a motion to open a public hearing. So just That's make all. a motion. Okay. So I move that we go into public hearing. We'll hear a second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. <laughs> we will now go into a public hearing um, to hear the order of business, um, items number one and two in the order of business. And I'll ask Councillor Farrell, um, actually they're both here. Well, let me put some things on the record, ma'am. Uh, Madam President, the need to yep. go along. Uh, Mark is D1 will be a copy of the advertisement of the public hearing. D2 will be a copy of the ordinance. B3 will be the recommendations of both our local planning agency and the county agency. What, uh, per the Pennsylvania Municipalities Planning Code, when a municipal uh, government chooses to amend their zoning ordinance like they are for medical marijuana and wireless communication facilities. It's required that a public hearing be held. Uh, there would be a brief explanation perhaps from uh, Councilor Farrell or I can yeah. get it related to either of these. Uh, then there will be an opportunity for uh, comment from Borough Council and an opportunity for the public. And then uh, the Council can do a couple of things. They can either close the public hearing and eventually take action on <laughs> items number one and two, which are under the order of business, or if they had additional questions, continue the public hearing to a later date. Um, Councilor Farrell. Thank you. I make a motion to approve ordinance number. No, no, uh, I'm sorry. That is under, I'm sorry, this is not, under the order of business, uh -huh. we have one and two. What we need to do is hold a public hearing on these two issues. Uh, meaning a brief explanation of each of these, uh, then allow for borough council comment, then public <coughs> comment, then close the public hearing, and then if council likes, they can vote on one two. Thank okay. Thanks for that clarification. Okay, so before us um, tonight sits um, two um, 
ordinance changes. The first one is regarding um, allowing a medical marijuana dispensary um, to exist in Jenkins Town. And we did discuss this um, at at least two or three um, meetings. We consulted with um, our solicitor and uh, we decided to move forward um, based on the fact that we are able to regulate its location and its general process of operation. Um, and we, um, again, medical marijuana dispensaries are already highly regulated. So um, we did not have to um, do that much work in terms of um, regulating its operation, but we did want to make sure that its location was somewhere in the town that fit a small town. Um, and so we did um, determine that um, putting it in the business district, fronting Old York Road, um, along with it following all the other um, regulations that it was already required to comply with, um, fit what we felt was appropriate. If anyone else has anything to add to that? And uh, uh, Council Carroll, I just wanted to uh, reiterate, this is uh, passed by General Assembly Per, per state law, every municipality should provide for this uh, medical marijuana use. If they do, don't, they run the risk of having to be put in any zoning district in the borough. So this is a preemptive strike uh, for us by saying where we would like this to appear, because we do have to provide for it somewhere in our town. And I would just like to add that the ordinance provides um, uh, reasonable measures to um, control the, the operation of the dispensary, such as um, um, in Part D, it says no t exterior sales and no sidewalk displays should be permitted, no drive-through, drop-off, or pickup <coughs> services. Um, hours of operation, 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Uh, I'm just summarizing a few. Um, no one under the age of 18 should be permitted into the medical marijuana dispensary. Um, Etc. All of this is available on online. <coughs> so, are there any questions or comments? Yes. I'd just like to say very pleased that we're in front of this. Um, again, if we didn't specify where this could be, then it could, we could be sued to put it anywhere. And it was um, our opinion that having a medical marijuana dispensary should one appear in the borough on York Road um, in the commercial or gaming districts was the appropriate place and not back in the day. Um, so we're very pleased about that. And I'll also say that uh, medical marijuana has been proven to be very effective helping people with chronic illness and controlling their pain or other symptoms much more safely than opioids, mm -hmm. which are leading to uh, addiction and death in, in airplane. So I hope we actually get one. Thank you. Any other questions from the citizens? <coughs> All right. And then what I suggest, uh, <coughs> Council Farrell, is take up the wireless communication facility ordinance, which essentially is, um, as we know, telecom is a changing industry. Uh, we want to regulate our right of ways uh, to say where uh, telecom pods, uh, towers and everything like that that appear in Jenkintown. So we were essentially giving the borough the chance to regulate our right of ways. Uh, and we were tightening it up because technology is continually changing in the telecom industry. Um, so that, that would be a brief summary of that ordinance. Thank you, Sister Kapani. Again, we were mindful of, um, of regulating where and how these things um, are placed in, in the borough because we didn't want them just placed anywhere. So. Um, and I'll just summarize a couple of the um, uh, clauses in the uh, proposed ordinance which say that, for example, uh, no tower-based WCF may be located on a building or structure that is listed on either National or Pennsylvania Register of Historic Places. Um, the lighting is um, regulated. Um, the appearance is regulated, shall be galvanized or painted with rust preventative paint. Um, they should not produce noise, um, and so on. Just a few things. So, um, Council Farrell, I would ask for additional comment, public comment, yep. and if you want to close the public hearing. Yeah. Are there any <coughs> other comments or questions about the um, 
wireless communications facilities. Um, okay, we're going to close um, <coughs> this part of public comment. Um, so we need a motion. And we need a motion to go back into our regular session. Is that right? Yes. yes. Motion to close the public hearing. Okay. Motion to close the public hearing and, and go back into our regular session. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? All right, thank you. Okay, so we are now back into our regular um, order of business. Um, so we don't we don't need our court reporter to. We don't um, act, take action on that either of those ordinances. No. Okay. No. Great. Thank you. Although we love to see you. <laughs> We're happy to see you. Go. <laughs> Um, the next um, thing we're going to have, a little again, a little out of order, is um, we have a very brief presentation from um, the, uh, our audit auditors, Barbicane, Thornton, and Company. So we shall hear a brief presentation. Thank, thank you, gentlemen, for coming. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I did a brief summary of our results of the audit this year, and Mike will be giving those. Um, uh, uh, Mike was a staff on, on the engagement. Um, I was the manager in charge of the engagement. So I'll take probably five minutes just to give you a brief results of what um, our results were this year. If you, if you turn to page one of the document that you have in front of you, uh, we were out here in February and March. Uh, we were out here for a week to do the audit. Um, we did uh, data audit uh, for March 27th, uh, 2017. Um, there was something that I wanted to throw out before I, I, I go ahead was the borough met the DC filing deadline for April 1st. So you met the state departments to send in a report that was submitted on time with the help of management. Okay. So when we when we come out here every year, we don't only test controls uh, that you have in place. We look at controls on your major um, expenditures and revenues. So we look at controls on your disbursements, payroll, and and revenue. And we do pick samples of these transactions during the year to make sure that you're following the procedures you have in place. We didn't find any major issues with any of these major areas, which indicates that it's a good job that management is doing. Um, we also did test controls of our expenditures. We pulled the largest sample of your expenditures and we reviewed the controls in place. We didn't have any major issues over those expenditures. We did have a couple of recommendations for management that we have provided to management and um, those will be implemented um, within the next year. Okay. We did give an unmodified opinion on, on the report, which means it was a clean opinion. We didn't have any significant deficiencies, any uh, internal control issues during the audit this year. Okay. So that's a brief, any questions on, <laughs> that's a brief, so the, the good thing though is though, there wasn't anything major during the audit this year. Classifications were done correctly, revenues were accounted for the way it was supposed to, and uh, this, this is an ideal audit for us, and when we come in, everything is being done the way it should be done, so uh, I would say congratulations to management for doing that, and, and, and council too for making sure that things are being done the right way. If you turn to the second page, what I did was I just did a couple of graphs that compares 2015 and 2016 year ends just to give you an idea of what uh, book years <coughs> look like. And if you look at the first table, I have um, major revenues. And, and if you look, your total revenues for 2016 was $6.29 million. And in 2015, it was 10.1. The big difference here is in 2015, there was bond proceeds of about $3.2 million. 
That's what makes the big difference between 2015 and 2016. Well, proceeds, I'm sorry, Mr. Uh, so that's the, that's the major difference. And if, if you look at table two, your expenditures too were about the same, which was a payment of, of the 2015 bond. So that's, you can see what's trending in the same direction for both years. Okay. On table two, the only thing I also wanted to point out here was your public works uh, expenditures was about 1.56 million in 2016 compared to 1.1 million in 2015. And the major expansion here was, I believe there was major road work done in 2016. Mm -hmm. And that's what basically is causing the increase in expenditures in 2016. <coughs> okay. Just to clear something up for people. Um, when you're talking about that difference between revenue, the large revenue and the large expense in 2015 is essentially refinancing. It refinances the bond, so basically. It's not, don't look at it as true revenue or true expense. It's not, exactly. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, thanks a lot. So table three, what I put here together was your cash and investment balances for 2015 and 2016. Your cash balances for both years were pretty similar for 2016 and 2015. Okay, so in 2016, you have about 8.1 mil, and 2015 was the same. Of this 8.1 mil for both years, about 4.9 of the 2016 figure belonged to the pension funds and 4.7 in 2015 belonged to the pension fund. So <coughs> about half of your cash and investment balance is related to your pension fund. Yeah. Okay, before, we have a capital expenditures and debt service uh, expenditure detail. So if you look at 2015, the capital expenditures was about $900,000, 900, and 2015 was $302,000. And as I mentioned earlier on, the big difference here is due to the construction, the real construction that went on in 2016. Okay. And if you look at your debt service too, it was about $310,000 in 2016 and 2.9. And the 2015 number relates to the refinance that was done in 2015. Okay. So that's a brief overview of your current year results. The one recommendation we had this year was yeah, if, if you look at your DCEU report, you see that you do submit a schedule of expenditures to DCED, capital expenditures to DCED. So we did give a recommendation that the borough impl uh, come implement a capitalization policy. And what this is that all your assets that are bought or you know, construction and all, you have a policy that says that anything over, let's say, $2,000 is considered a capital asset. You know, so then whatever you report to, DCED every year would be civil items, not that you know one year you report something that is a five hundred dollar purchase as a capital item, whereas in let's say next year you report something as two thousand dollars a capital item. So we give a recommendation that have a um, policy that kind of like states everything that a borrower would consider as a capital item, and we believe it will make reporting to DCED easier in, in future years. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, do you have a recommendation for the, that amount? Yes, we do have a sample policy that we drew up, and I'll be giving that to I'll send that to Rick sometime next week. And council can decide on whatever threshold they want to use for that for that policy. Okay. Yes, thank you. It depend, and, and a lot of borrowers have different si uh, amounts depending on the size. Right, but that's what I'm right. interested here is yeah. do you recommend that it be $2,000 or $500 or durable equipment only? Or, uh, but you've got that in the center. Right, we have a sample policy. And any questions that Rick has, he could always reach out and we can kind of like go into detail as to what that would benefit the bar. Thank you. Okay. So that's a quick overview of the 2016 audit. Uh, any questions uh, about anything that I said tonight? Yeah. I just had a comment, mm -hmm. um, which is I want to thank um, Rick Barry and Rick Bach immensely for this is several years in a row with opinions. Um, you know, this is an A, an a report card for 
these guys. And especially, especially, I think you mentioned um, that this was a year of transition, right? Um, and uh, in our financial staff, so um, I want to thank both of you, especially for making a smooth transition. And, for, um, and no, nobody gets to add to it. In a lot of places where it's transition in the finance team, it's always not an easy year having an audit done. And we came in and management was prepared and um, we're able to get all this done pretty smoothly. So, um, yeah. Good question, and, yes. and Rick, you may know this too. Um, when we go out to borrow money, are, is there like a bond rating attached to our debt? And and are, do you deal with that or know about that? Or I'm curious what our bond rating is and is it good? Or I assume it is, but. It should be fine. Uh, it's a different group of people. There's bond, special bond council. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah. And yeah. Um, we did get a report showing what our rough borrowing ability, uh, mm -hmm. borrowing capacity was. Right. right. Refinance mm -hmm. um, the note. And Michael, I got to work on that. And yeah. We're very pleased with the reduction in the interest rate we got. And we were nowhere near our borrowing capacity. That doesn't mean I recommend <laughs> <laughs> borrow a crazy amount of money, right. um, but should some you know emergency thing happen, mm -hmm. we, we'd be able to borrow um, many times uh, what we've already borrowed. Right, um, which is a really important impact of this stellar financial standard. Right. Right. The mm -hmm. bonds are not rated. The organization doesn't get a rating. An individual bond would get a rating. Oh, I see. Um, and it depends on us, but it also depends on what sort of guarantees we're given. Mm -hmm. So when a municipality borrows, the state can guarantee or different different government entities can, can guarantee those things. Right. Um, and then the specifics of what it's being borrowed for, et cetera, all those would go so in. it's more attached to the note than the rate of the note. And right. yeah, the bond that exists now, I don't know what the rate is. It's more of a bank. Sean, do you want to explain the difference? In the, bond, in the borrowing that we do? Yeah, we don't really go out in the market and issue bonds. We're, we're just doing a bank. bank. Oh, so we don't really do well. that. A bigger municipality, like several of the others I represent, they do that, but mm -hmm. they're borrowing a lot more money. I see. Yeah, and they're much bigger entities. So it's more analogous. But it costs quite a lot of money. It costs money a lot of money to do about it. Several hundred yeah. thousand dollars. Yeah. yeah. So unless you're borrowing 10 million or something, that's a huge hunk of it. Okay. So you don't you just borrow it from the bank. But, but we could. I mean, if we decided to do some huge thing, you know, decided to, I don't know, put Old York Road underground through town center. Second. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we need a bond for that. Um, Sorry for the digression. We have one more question, Michael. Yeah, we'd, also, we'd also need an examination. If uh, <laughs> yes, exactly. Two quick things. One, that, as Rick was talking about, our refinancing, the bad news is how it looks on the charts. The good news is. We're saving something like twenty-five thousand dollars a year because we got before interest rates moved up. So we we got good there. And over um, you know, years and years that ends up. Yeah. So. And the other piece of that is, and it also means that we're paying it down faster at the same mm -hmm. you know, principle. The second thing is, it says a lot about the previous auditors as well that we're we're getting good work because the, one of the reasons you change auditors on a regular basis is to have somebody else come in and make sure of things. And so the fact that there's very little to recommend and very few changes means that we've been getting good audit service for the last six years. Mm -hmm. That's good to know. Thank you for that. All right. And I want to thank you both for your thorough review and, um, and for your recommendations. Thank you. Yeah. Thank Thanks you. for coming thank out. You. All right. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Okay. Um, okay. Turning now to our agenda, uh, I would like to open the floor for public comment and questions. Anyone who would like to stand and make some comment or questions? Yes. Uh, Lori Durkin, 205 Running the Avenue. Um, uh, <coughs> this last month I came and made a request about uh, a blast email functionality being used to let the community know about upcoming council meetings and committee meetings and key items on the agenda and um, to date that hasn't happened yet and to follow up with your introductory comments I'd like to reiterate that request. Um, I think it's a great way to have more light on what the topics are and uh, 
promote community engagement and um, uh, so I'd like to reiterate that request. Thank you, and I'll just comment on that. Um, <coughs> we had an item that we thought was really important that we let the community know on tonight's agenda, and that is um, consideration of um, advertising for a request for information. Um, and so we did put that on the landing page of the website. Um, at the moment, I, I have felt like I'm not sure that we have um, the staffing to put all of our agenda on, you know, to, do, to keep doing a blast of all of our agenda. So we will go back to that at our admin of finance and see if we want to make that a priority of staff to put all the agenda on a blast. Um, I think what we did this time around was we did a blast that said, go to the borough website and you can read about um, what's coming up on our company. We didn't do a blast, we just put it on the website. Okay. Work in progress. Yeah, so it's a work in progress, but we thank you for your suggestion and, um, and we will keep <coughs> trying to figure out how that fits into the workflow of staff. Yeah. yeah, there was quite a bit of discussion and debate on how to do that. So um, if anyone else has opinions on it, we'd love to hear it because what we're trying to do is get information out in a transparent fashion. So please, you know, tonight, some other time, let us know what you think. People on Facebook, let us know what you think. Any other questions or comments? I have a question. Dave yes, down 301. <coughs> Can, I didn't make the last month meeting, but can anybody give me an update on the the house that's on the 100 block of Walnut Street that was a major problem? Do you know what that's what's going on with that right now? The last we heard, it was the guy had a uh, warrant out for his arrest. I will. Um, you're talking about 108. I don't know the exact 100 something. Okay. Um, okay. I just want to um, curious on what the update is on that. Yeah, manager, well, can you update us on the? What yes, Madam done? President, the house is going through a sale. They filed for their uh, certification, and a new owner came in and discussed the demo permits that he's going to need and the list of uh, violations that we have. The owner that had their search warrant, uh, not search warrant, warrant for their arrest, came in and satisfied all the bills with the borough and then went to the court and satisfied their um, tickets there. Okay, and um, I'll just follow up with a few questions of my own. Um, so there was a considerable concern about um, animals getting through from the one side of the uh, building to the other side of the building, and also about um, any kind of, I don't know, toxic fumes or um, mm -hmm. mold that might be getting through from one side to the other. Do you know the speed with which that is being addressed? Yes, we, we expect him to be back in this week to do a pre-construction meeting with us. So hopefully by the end of this week we'll know when he's going to start his actual work. Okay, so we don't have a time frame on that just yet? That is correct. Okay. And is there any way that we can speed that work up or encourage him to move quickly? He understands how it works for David and the reason for it. He's been in the house so he sees the condition of it. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm just concerned about the owners on, or the uh, residents on the other side. <coughs> uh, yes. So George, all the any holes in the roofs or anything like that that was allowing animals to get in, that's been corrected? No, it has not been corrected. It has not been corrected, no. Okay. So when that owner comes in, can we ask them to get on that ASAP? Yeah, we explained to them everything that needs to be done, the mold remediation, making the structure safe and sound. Mm -hmm. He seems up for it, he seems to understand it. And that, that, he came back and met with us and doesn't think it's going to be much of a problem. We were surprised when he came back with that. I'm sure we'll follow up. We're surprised when he came back. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and will you set a time frame with him for that? Yeah, once he takes possession of the house, absolutely. Okay. Do we know when he's taking possession of the house? Yeah. No, that I don't know. Yeah. We're talking a month, six months, a year. 
I mean, how long? To, I don't know how long it would take for something like that to happen. Does anybody know? I don't know. I'm just asking the question. It can't be the first time it's ever happened. It depends on the. the um, it's a real estate transaction, so there's, there's lots of factors that, that come in there. Um, all right. Well, thank you for that update. Uh, are, there, are there any other questions or comments? Yes. Piggy Downs, the real one. I just wanted to follow up to say that I, I wanted to ask for our counsel too, most especially Mr. Lock and uh, Mr. Cook. I mean, I'll be meeting with Mr. Lock after this meeting, but um, um, the zoning citation with regard to 303 Renamy remains pending and the um, corresponding fine to go with that. Business has the corresponding. I'm sorry. Fine. 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 fine thank you. Between Judge McHugh's office, um, the business has picked up again as it's spring, and so I'm just wondering what the borough's plan of action is. And like I said, I'll be meeting with George this afternoon. In fact, George sent me an email last night saying the owners had called him yesterday to say that they were bringing some wood and equipment off site, and they just wanted to bring that to his attention. But publicly, I just want to say we were advised that all of that had been, and George was advised that that had all been removed. So, you know, George, George had sent the email saying, I just wanted to let you know. And sure enough, like there were a couple days last week and again this morning, where they were removing stuff, loading it into a truck, the, the boards and the wheelbarrows and other stuff. So, um, the public comment is again, the business is up and running again. And now the meeting with church, hopefully this evening or sometime, is to determine what action the bureau is going to take to, again, kind of clamp down on this as, as quickly as possible and follow up with Judge McHugh. To um, because the, her, her recommendation, um, we are to go back to them as quickly as possible, as quickly as the business picked up again. Um, Manager Lott, off. Off the top of your head, do you have, you, do you have any response to the question of um, what action the borough can take to keep monitoring this situation and following up with Judge McHugh? Well, we make two, two site visits a day to the fellow's house, and we haven't had any complaints come in. If a complaint comes in, we'll investigate it, or if we see something that indicates a business is being run there during our site inspections, we will address it. Okay. And so um, the removal of stuff from the property is not necessarily indication that a business is being run? That is correct. Anybody can remove stuff from the property. Okay. And um, what, what would be the, can you repeat what the indicators of a business um, would be? Um, I don't have the zoning code in front of me. I would quote out of it. I would quote out of it, but basically what the bottom line in the description is, is that activity that exceeds what you would see at a residential dwelling. Okay. No customers, no employees. We talk about noise, um, vibration. Okay. Thank you. And thank you, um, Ms. Downs for your <coughs> question and comment. Um, and I, I just want to say that uh, we do have a big agenda tonight. <coughs> um, hopefully we can keep the meeting short. Uh, all right. Uh, moving ahead to committee reports. Uh, let's hear from Admin Finance. Mr. Madam President. Um, a number of things are fairly interesting. Uh, our clear Gov website is nearing completion. Uh, do we know a date when we'll be actually publishing it? I don't. We will present to you at A and F next uh, next week. We'll see that with the next A and F, and then so we will be very shortly after that. Okay. So we're this is satisfied, but we'll see. this is a system that um, loads all the financials for the borough going back several years and allows the public to slice and dice and investigate and see every single line item and categorize it and compare it year to year, et cetera, et cetera. 
And compared to other municipalities. And compared to other, exactly. Thank you. Um, and compared to other municipalities, so you can see um, where we spend more or less or differently than other municipalities. So I'm uh, very excited about getting it up and running. Um, there are a number of grants that are taking place to repair sewers, including handicap ramps on the sidewalks, etc. Um, the audit we already heard about, which was very good news. And lastly, uh, we opened up the conversation about moving the night of the admin and finance and BCMR meetings so that they wouldn't conflict with school board meetings um, in the interest of allowing perhaps some of us to attend school board meetings or vice versa. Mm -hmm. Because having us always meet at the same time um, inhibits crosstalk and communication. Mm -hmm. So we decided that we will have meet on the which, which we didn't saying? decide yet. Um, we, we, we decided that we would not do it until either September or January so that there's enough public notice. And right. So we're not going to change it until, I, I thought we were shooting for September. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Moving it to third Wednesday. Third, the month. Wednesday. third Wednesday. Yeah. But I don't think it's been, I think the next step in this finance will have further discussion. Okay. Okay. All right. That's it for me. Thank you very much. Any questions or comments? Um, building zoning and revitalization, Councilor Farrell. Um, <clears throat> a number of the minutes are in your Dropbox. Um, a large portion of the meeting was um, discussion of the um, the proposed RFI and how to best move forward uh, in communicating that. Um, that plan and that process. Um, so that you will see on the agenda, along with a number of other BZNR um, items. Um, so rather than rehash them all, I'll take any questions regarding anything. Uh, one thing I will highlight is I'm eager to hear um, the awards for the um, 2040 implementation grant are coming up next week, I think, correct? May George, 7th. May 7th. Um, and we did submit a grant for the um, Southern Gateway. Um, and I'm very eager to uh, hopefully receive some good news on that end next week. So we're very hopeful with that. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll just highlight that we do have a couple of items on the order of business um, for advertising because we are, um, we keep thinking about uh, those gateway areas. So we um, are uh, proposing some changes to our zoning. Yeah, so I was going to talk a little bit more about that when that came up. However, um, I, can, I can mention that um, one of the orders of business tonight is um, changing, um, Um, changing our car storage and surface parking um, ordinance so that we can, again, somewhat proactively think about protecting um, our northern gateway for a similar um, gateway um, entrance um, into the borough. Um, currently, <coughs> it is open to all sorts of development, not necessarily development we think is in the best interest of Jenkintown. So. Great, thank you. Uh, next up is the public is public safety. Yes. Mr. Whitney. Uh, we have wide on the agenda tonight. Uh, we are because this is a rather early borough council meeting. We something we're doing after the council meeting, like we're having the uh, fire commission meeting Wednesday. Oh, we're okay. also interviewing the uh, part-time uh, fire marshal folks on Thursday. And this is the 24th, which is one of the earliest borough council meetings, I recall. Mm -hmm. uh, so therefore, we end up doing that. Also, uh, you know, the minutes are in your drop box. I uh, will entertain any questions. Any questions or comments? Okay. Uh, we'll hold off and wait until Councilor Connor comes in. So we can like to report on public works. Uh, Jenkintown School District, Councilor McGraw. I'm the formal report. I do want everyone to know that we're 
working harder to improve our quality of our communication with the school district. And so uh, George and I are meeting with Dr. Marcus tomorrow afternoon to think about some suggestions for how we can better do that. And I'll be sure to tell her that we're looking into the date of the for our <coughs> So she knows that that's a preliminary step in that mm -hmm. direction. Um, Jenkintown, thank you. Any questions or comments? The Jenkintown Community Alliance. To you. Um, JCA uh, had a very um, productive meeting earlier in the month. Um, they have identified a chairperson to um, lead the Arts Fest this year. Um, it was a need. Um, and we had a lot of discussions about um, who would be taking on various responsibilities and things are progressing. Um, progressing well, I think, and um, they're still very open to folks who are interested in, um, in volunteering to step up and, um, and help out with it. So, but as of now, the Arts Fest is, is on for um, September, I don't have the date in front of me, um, but um, the date is in September, it's Sunday, <laughs> and, um, and it will be downsized um, a little bit, um, but it will go on. Plan. Who's the uh, chair? Beth Pasquale, oh. who had some, um, who had apparently, prior to my involvement, and in had led the um, the efforts with uh, the arts fest before. So she's well aware of how to do it, and they're very happy to have her back on board. Who's the leadership of the JCA? Is it the same person? Or? So yes, um, Melissa um, Felpart, rather, is still the president, okay. um, and leadership is. Still, basically the way it was, but we we're really looking for some um, some new leadership, yeah. um, additional leadership to help with the uh, the heavy, you know, carry of the arts fest. Sure. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, I see here it's announced September seventeenth. Thank you. Sure. Seventh in my head, but I didn't want to say it, so I don't know. That's right. So the seventeenth. Yeah. Okay. Great. Um. All right, and I've just gotten word that Councilor Connors is not coming, so um, the public works notes from the meeting minutes, uh, and the meeting minutes are in our Dropbox, and uh, maybe we could combine that with a public works department report. Um, Mr. Biggins, would you tell us a few highlights of, from public works? Uh, sure, a few highlights this month, uh, when, I was, when I was part time workers, he's going along. Train real hard, got a CDL. So we like to offer them a full time position as well. Uh -huh. uh, other than that, we sent one of our former laborers, now driver, Mark Fagoni, down to Waco, Texas for training with the Central Sweeper. It was a two day training. Uh -huh. They teach you all about the sweeper, how to operate it, how to maintenance it, tricks of the trades. It's just guys down here in Waco, it's just guys that run sweepers all day. We don't do it all day, but it's one of the big things in the spring and summer for us. And Mark took it and all that and came back. So I learned a lot. Other than that, we have a snowstorm. We use about, use about 67 tons of salt, 1,300 gallons of brine. Other than that, nothing big. I'll be open to answer any questions. Okay. For public works, though, we did get a $150,000 grant. Thank you. And that was a sanitary sewer mm -hmm. PA salt small water grant. You're gonna mess up. Sorry. Okay. And I see here that it's a 15% match. So um and do you know that will be specifically for which streets? Um, I don't know exactly which streets it's proposed. Okay. We have to evaluate. We, we submitted for 450000 437000 actually. So we're going to have to pare it down. We're going to take the two drainage basins that are experienced overflows. Uh, they're barely experiencing overflows, but a couple times a quarter they'll exceed the limit. Mm -hmm. be a lower end from the run of need, sear, in that area. Um, I was wondering too if you would just comment, Manager Locke, a little bit about the shared paving with Abington and the projects that have been happening. I mean, there's a lot of street disruption right now. And just could you talk a little bit about what's going on and what will be done to <coughs> repair the streets? Certainly. <coughs> The 
excavations on the streets are from people installing new gas mains. And they are on several streets. They're on uh, Cedar, Allen, Hillside, Needham, Shoemaker. And last week, they started in the Vista and Rodman. Uh, they also will be doing Clement, Rydell, and Vernon. Now, there's segments of those roads the entire road. Uh, we're pushing for Linda Vista and Robin to get done as soon as they can. They told us last week that starting this week, they would have two crews on it for as long as they could afford to, and then they'll go back to one. Right now, they're looking at being done the first week of September. Mm -hmm. uh, we'd like to pay them in August before people go back to school. But you can pay them up until October 15th. Mm -hmm. uh, but they know that we would very much like to get it paid in August. So this is the latest dates that they'll be done, and they're hopeful. They have to give us uh, an extended period here, allow us to 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 And will they, is this the case where they'll pay half the road and we pay half the road? That is correct. On almost all of these streets, they haven't been paved. And on well, Hillside, they'll have to pave curb to curb. That was done last year. Um, Elm, they'll have to pay curb to curb. These other ones, they'll be paying, paying for half of the road to be paid. Okay. They do the trench restoration, and then they look at what it would cost us to do it, and what it would cost people to do it, and whatever is the least, they will give us 50% of that cost. Okay. So Linda Vista and Robin, we had already prepared to pay that uh, because they were running the gas means down that they were going to give us 50% of that cost. For holding off for a year, um, they'll pay for half that period. And the joint paving with Abington are roads that we split, usually down the middle, but they're also the, the borders are jagged. Um, when you with Rydell, we own both sides of that till Clement, and then we own half of the road to Newbold. Uh, so they're offering to pay that, and they only charge for material. And the milling machine, they don't charge us for the labor, so it's a really reduced rate. Mm -hmm. And after they proposed that to us, we found out that Pico is going to go down line. So Pico will pay for half of that reduced rate. Um, the other road that they, we own half of them is Clover. Pico is going down their side, Abington side of Clover, and they haven't disturbed our side. So mm -hmm. it, it's, we can't recommend whether to pay the debt or not to see if they've done the work, they've done all their services. They may then, might end up tearing our side up. Also, and that might come in that we say we should pay this our half dollar at it, especially for having people pay their half of it. Okay. All right, thank you very much. Yes, yeah, um, just uh, I want to back up a little bit to public safety. Um, I was remiss in not um, acknowledging the new school crossing um, flashers that were put in oh, um, really? earlier in the month. They were long awaited. Um, I wanna thank George very much for the follow up. Um, and George really pursued that TAC grant to make those um, school crossing lights viable and, and available to us. And um, he worked hard to keep that project on um, on time as much as was humanly possible. Um, so it was a long process, but they're up and they are unmissable now. Um, so uh, I've received a lot of uh, public feedback um, an appreciation of those those lights, and um, you know, I don't know if the chief has has noted um, significant slowing of the traffic, but I know when I'm walking there during yeah, the school noticed. times, I do yep. feel like folks are observing mm -hmm. now the the school zone. A lot of people didn't see the sign. Exactly. <laughs> I saw something I've never seen before: someone turning right out of the school, right onto the street, and staying at 15 miles an hour. Yeah, they're working. Imagine that. So that was great. And we're very happy to have them. <laughs> so thank you for everybody who worked hard on that project. Mm -hmm. Great. Any other questions or comments? Thank you. Uh, multi municipal group, Council Golden. No report tonight except to tell people, anyone who's worried, the Eagles are away on, the, on September 17th. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, we just had our public works department report. Um, engineering, do you have anything more to add? Um, those were some of the highlights. Our report was mm -hmm. uh, in your uh, your information packets. Uh, we're doing the small water grant highlight. The school flashes are activated. 
Um, we included some funding for the um, mid block crossing on Florence, and one of the grant applications that just went in. So we're uh, going to look after that. Mm -hmm. Madam President? Yes. I don't know if you know, this is Mark Pickerton. He works with, he's with Canone, he's our traffic engineer, he's sitting in for Cal. Mm -hmm. I don't know what Cal City is doing, it's something for him. He's out in Mass. Oh, that's right. he's yeah. at uh, the seminar at State College. It sounds like fun. <laughs> 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 working very hard right now. Mark has been very responsive. He's been helping us with the traffic light at Walnut, the run meeting, the signage that went in along Walnut. He went and met with the residents who were unhappy about the new signs. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's been very responsive and helpful. I just wanted to introduce him to the council. Oh, thank you. Does that mean that Earl's gone? Or you? No. No. Oh, okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> I love Earl. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure I'll learn to love you. He knows an abbey, so we can grab him quick. I have a question for either yes. one of you guys. Um, is the mid block crossing at Summit and 611 still happening? They installed it. Penn got the store. Oh, they did? Yeah. Okay. And there's lights there? Not yet. Okay, when is that happening? Uh, we have to talk to Fran Amy, who's in charge of PennDOT, and install it. Okay. You know, but the striping is there, and then the... No, the two handicap ramps are installed. There. Okay. So the striping and the lights will come in the, in the well, summer, you think, or...? I would expect them to go up right away. Yeah. But uh, I wouldn't jump in. Okay. Very good. So we have an opportunity to do a ramp on our side of summer mm -hmm. at almost 50% savings of mm -hmm. local cost. So it's something we're going to have to consider. They're coming back to the town. They have to do homestead. We may move three streets this morning. I called them up by Noble train station. Okay. So they're coming back up this way, so we'll have the opportunity. It's about $18,000 under the PennDOT contract, and they're willing to do it for $10,200. So it might be something. I was just afraid. I spoke to the committee about it, and they all thought it was a good idea when we talked about it. Mm -hmm. Until we know what PennDOT's doing with their crosswalking and lights, I don't know if they want to jump into that situation. Yeah, yeah. Okay, something to watch. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Um, the well, it looks great on the signs. The, I thought we had also talked about maybe pulling out that 25 mile per hour sign. Did. did it come out? Yeah. Okay. Great, thanks. And I just wondered if you could tell, remind me again the rationale for having mid block crossing on Florence. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, we met with um, we met out there to review, and uh, the feedback we received was there's um, quite a bit quite a bit of school children mm -hmm. that cross. They didn't use the playground to go to and from school, mm -hmm. and um, it's greater than 300 feet from the crossings from the nearest crossings, mm -hmm. and the you children, know, the folks just aren't going up to the next block. They're not going to so the stop sign. No, they all cross in the middle, and also. There's a um, opening kind of in the in the fence right. with steps leading up to it, and so that's kind of the main entryway for all the kids that are coming from um, Beaver Hill. And there's so many kids that cross alone that don't cross with parents, and um, it's with all the cars parked there. There's no visibility. The, the kids can't even see to look in the street until they're actually in the street, mm -hmm. and it's just not at all a safe. Um, it's not safe. And it's also not only Beaver Hill, but also Greenwood Terrace. So a lot yeah, of kids come up from Greenwood yeah. Avenue and they get left up the yeah. and then cross over to the playground to go into the back entrance. And is it far enough away from the rise? That was um, something we looked at very carefully while we were out there. Yeah. So um, it came up with a very good location that has good sight distance. Mm -hmm. And the crosswalk itself is a little bit, um, a little bit kind of bumped out, the one that, that mm -hmm. worked. Um, and so there's better vis visibility with the person that kind of being bumped out. Mm -hmm. yeah. President, on, yes. the, the, on the school side, we described it a little bit. It's ramped out sort of like on west, mm -hmm. and it allows it to come out for safety, and that's where the ramp is. Mm -hmm. That way, you only lose three parking spaces on Florence. Mm -hmm. If you just had a crosswalk for the uh, for the visual, you had we would lose eight spots. Wow! So the bump out's a little more expensive, but it's much more safer, and you lose five of those spots. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? Um, solicitor's report. Do you have anything? Uh, thank you very much, Madam mm -hmm. President. Uh, this past month, we've worked with staff on uh, finalizing the medical marijuana ordinance as agenda item number one, uh, agenda, agenda item number two, the wireless communications ordinance, as well as agenda item number six, the residential use and occupancy 
uh, permit ordinance, um, as well as uh, working with staff on responding to voluminous uh, right to know requests. Uh, also, too, uh, I know I had emailed you and Council of Bunker uh, before the meeting, and it's up to the Council if they wanted to. Uh, we did have um, several months ago, uh, Council had expressed a desire to look into both their uh, existing tax collection as well as their audit program under the Taxpayer Bill of Rights. We have a, a, a document that is uh, ready with final review of the manager and solicitor to go out uh, for advertising. Uh, it's, I know it's not on the agenda, but if council wanted to take that under um, uh, new business, they could do so and make a motion just so we can get moving on the process. And uh, of course, because it's not on the agenda, you'd have to open that portion up to additional public comment if anyone from the audience wanted to. And that, that concludes my report, Madam President. Thank you very much. And can I just ask a clarifying question? Was that ordinance that you were talking about before both collection and auditing? Mm -hmm. The RFQ was, yeah. Okay. Because um, I didn't see the collection part of it. Okay. I will reread it. Yeah, it says both. Thank you very much. Um, Mayor's report. Yeah, no formal report, Madam President. Um, but I, I will say that, um, that the rec board's Easter egg or egg hunt event that we had at the playground, um, I did um, set up some focus groups with some of the kids and got a lot of nice opinions and feedback about the Cedar Creek Park and what they would like to see and mm -hmm. um, some surprises. And I'll, I'll write that up. And I don't know the next time that could meet and we can talk through that stuff. Um, the, we're going to use the next um, EAC meeting, which is May maybe 15th or something. Okay. Yeah. Um, All right, 17th, I'll bring that time. 17th, May 17th, uh, for that purpose. So great. it would be great if you could bring that information. Sure. Other than that, I have nothing to report. Okay. Um, good. Um, Chief D. Valentino. Thank you, Madam President. Um, just a few comments. First of all, my reports are in your, in your Dropbox. And um, I want to remind the residents that on Saturday, uh, the 29th of April, we're having a drug take back day. So if anybody has any unused or expired medications, bring them up, and um, an officer will, will be here to collect them. And this is in conjunction with the district attorney's office and the police chief's association. It's county wide. Ordinarily, we have a drop box in our lobby that people can drop them off at any time. But this is a, a cooperation, cooperative effort with the county on Saturday, the 29th. Great. And I'm going to put it on Facebook too, okay. just to remind folks as well. Thank you. Um, we were sorry to hear about the loss of property. Yes. I was going to say, uh, we appreciate the comments, the very kind comments from the board, from the residents uh, about Rocky. We, we really appreciate that. He was well received with the community when he first arrived. And he served well, and, uh, but he was ill, so we appreciate all the, all the kind comments from the residents. And how is Rocky II doing? He, they're doing. They're doing well. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> there's two. Right. Oh, that's two. Right. Right. Two. Right. Right. No, they're doing well. They're, they're, they're doing well. Okay. They're not rocky, but they're doing well. Um, and one more thing, we um, an inspection from the Pennsylvania State Police and the <laughs> Drug Enforcement Agency uh, to the police station is imminent. We don't know when the inspection will be, but it'll be in the very, very near future. They just won't tell us the date. They'll, they'll show up and they'll do their inspection. Um, regardless of that, uh, we're prepared for them and uh, we're looking forward to their visit. All right. Any questions or comments? Thank you. Um, Manager Lock, do you have anything you'd like to tell us from your report? Yes, Madam Chairman. I would like to hit a couple of things. Most of everything in my report, which is in your drop box, has been touched on by somebody. Okay. Um, the Abington Consortium that we entered with the lighting is off to a good start. They came in and they fixed four lights that have been broken and unable to be fixed for quite some time. Uh, they also addressed the residents' concern at Greenwood and Walnut, who was, their whole house was illuminated by the LED light. And it was as simple as installing what they call a shade on the back of it. That's really all they did. Uh, 
Uh, and it did all that in a half a day. So even though it's $27 now or less, uh, it, it worked pretty well. But we'll be happy with that. Uh, Mr. Ware and I met with the LED uh, procurement <coughs> project. DVRPC has handled that. We met with Johnson Controls. That has actually begun. The majority of the decorative lights have been replaced with LED. And um, they're talking about May coming in and installing our cover heads. We're next in line. As soon as they come in, we'll be in here. It's actually a local contractor that won the big installments, Armour and Sons. So we're familiar with them and they're familiar with the borough. Jim has been working with them. Uh, all the gates and that we talked about with the construction, I already explained that. Zoning and use. Uh, we did issue one for the Shannon Creek Brewery. We issued a zoning and use to a business called Fit Tribe. It's going to 205 York. Hot York is expanding into the second store next to where they were. Uh, we increased business. And next month, we will, before council, will come uh, a conditional use hearing from mid door properties. They acquired the Sachs building. They want to leave commercial on the first two floors and put apartments upstairs on the third floor. It's four apartments. Our code states that if it's more than three, it's an apartment house and needs a conditional use hearing. So that'll go through planning commission, BZ and R, and they'll finally come through you guys at the end of the month. But also go to the county for them to look at the application. Great. I think everybody must have been hit on it. If there's any questions, I'd be pleased to answer. Are there any questions for the manager? Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you very much. Let's turn now to the order of business. Um, ordinance number one, Councilor Carroll. Okay. And two. All right, so after the public hearing, we can now um, move on these ordinances. I make a motion to approve ordinance number 2017 1 pertaining to the Medical mm -hmm. Marijuana Act. Sure. All right. Any com uh, questions or concerns? Comments? All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you very much. Um, mm -hmm. Item number two. Item number two, I make a motion to approve ordinance number 2017 2 pertaining to wireless communications facilities. Okay. All right. Are there any questions or comments? All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you very much. Uh, item three, Councillor Whitney. Uh, ordinance uh, <coughs> 2017 3, Borough Code Provision for Accreditation Standards. This is for the police. Motion. I make a motion to approve ordinance number 2017 3, which contains the required language to match the Borough Code and the accreditation standards. Okay. Right. And um, any questions or comments? I believe that these are accreditation standards for the police. police. And all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, thank you. Uh, item number four, Council Farrell. I make a motion to advertise ordinance number 2017 4 pertaining to the zoning of the car storage slash surface parking lot. Right. Do I hear a second? Second. Okay. Any co questions or comments? And again, this is just your advertising a proposed ordinance that will modify our um, zoning code. So this isn't about a specific parking lot. This is this is know, modifying our code. Sure they can be where they shouldn't have them. It also defines the term car storage, which we discovered we didn't we hadn't defined mm -hmm. in our code. Mm -hmm. um, and our goal is to limit um, the places that car storage can be uh, can happen around the borough. Mm -hmm. um, would, would this um, if this ordinance is approved, would this apply to the, the property in Washington Lane? That is a good question. I can't remember the answer to that. We did discuss it. It applies to the gateway. That is in the gateway. That would allow car storage there. No, it would not it allow would, the car storage. No, it would not allow it there because... The um, size of the lot. Okay. Okay. It goes under a conditional use, which is a, a, a class mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. which says that the lot has to be 40,000 square feet. That's already in the code. This is just an additional, additional yeah, use. Yeah, it's a different ones that we need from the council. And uh, 
to have this one in your lot has to be 40,000 square feet in your lot. All right, so we have a motion on the floor and a second. Uh, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, thank you very much. Um, item five, uh, I move to advertise the RFI request for information um, for the concept sale and development of borough-owned properties on Summit Island. Okay, are there any questions or comments? So as we wrote in on our website, um, this is, our intention with this is to um, advertise uh, and seek information from anyone who might be interested in developing the parcels of property that are owned by the borough right here on Summit Avenue. Um, our intention, if I can just find this right for a second, is to um, permit development. At the moment, this property, because it's owned by a borough council, um, does not uh, engender taxes. And uh, it does seem to us that it might be used in a way that would um, be more beneficial um, and bring in more tax revenue for the borough. So we've also been approached um, by a developer who's interested, and that led us to believe that we should have an open and transparent process. Um, so we are putting this RFI out so that we might hear from other people and see what the highest and best use might be. Um, we're interested in having mixed use development. Um, we ha think that um, some kind of residential um, would be appropriate, but we are also concerned about um, reducing and minimizing the impact on the school. So we don't, because we're very sensitive to the fact that um, our school is quite crowded. Um, I see your hand and I'll call you on you in a minute. Um, <laughs> and um, we also are really um, uh, interested in um, making sure that there's public parking that is in excess of the amount of parking that might be needed for, for any kind of a structure. Uh, and we also, of course, want to generate foot traffic for the already existing businesses and commercial um, endeavors that are happening in the borough. So uh, those are some of the objectives that we've talked about and also that are articulated in our uh, Jenkintown 2035 um, plan that has, is being um, in the process of being adopted and that has been developed by the Montgomery County Planning Commission. Um, Mr. Golden, thank you. Uh, one of the key issues here is that we were approached by a developer and this council did not want to react to things. What it wanted to do is find the most optimal opportunities and then decide, A, whether or not to do it at all, and B, what it would mean, um, what's the best one. And so the one place to look is in our uh, section on requirements for the redevelopment plan. I'm just going to read this because something we're doing that's unique is we're not saying build us a hotel or build us residential or build us commercial. We're saying you figure out what you can build that's going to best meet our requirements. And the things that we're hoping to maximize are uh, substantial tax revenues, particularly for Gendertown School District, public parking availability beyond the needs of the project only, design, massing materials, and other aspects in line with borough design efforts, generate foot traffic for borough retail, meet housing and or other needs of the borough, limited impact upon school population, willingness to share information with the public as part of the process, and then pretty much anything else that, that makes sense as we go along and learn more. So. Thank you for reiterating what I just said. Um, all right, so there's a motion on the floor and a second. Any questions or comments? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Is there any opposed? Thank you. All right, item number six, Council Carroll. I make a motion to advertise ordinance number 2017-5 pertaining to the creation of a use and occupancy inspection for residential resales. Sure. All right, and um, can you just talk a little bit about this, what this ordinance might be calling for? 
So this their ordinance calls for um, added language to um, the health and safety of um, of borough homeowners, um, and it requires in chapter one hundred and six of the ordinance. It requires um, sewer lateral inspections and um, requires a, um, repairs if defects are found before homes are um, changed hands. Homeowners, um, a new homeowner. Uh, buys a property, they'll have the knowledge of whether or not there are any um, sewer lateral um, defects. Um, so we feel that that was beneficial for a few reasons. Um, one, it's in the best interest of potential buyers to know the condition of, of that um, aspect of their home prior to purchase. It provides for um, any potential negative environmental impact if there is in fact a defect. And it also demonstrates the borough's um, effort to comply with DEP regulations regarding um, so we're lateral, you know, issues and contaminations. Is the use and occupancy permit strictly limited to the condition of the lateral, or is it um, more broad than that? There are, it is more broad than that. George can probably speak. Mm -hmm. Please. Mm -hmm. There's four items on it. The sewer lateral, mm -hmm. concrete condition of the sidewalk and curve mm -hmm. as one item. A four-inch reflective number on the house, mm -hmm. which is a big issue with this. And the other is smoke detectors. Okay. Uh, now this ordinance addresses the smoke detectors as our neighboring municipalities do, and that we don't go inside the house, but they have a notarized statement of the location, require locations, and they sign off saying that they're here in this place, and notarize it, and then that goes in the property. So there's no inside house inspection as part of any of this? That is correct. Okay. Thanks. All right, so there's a motion on the floor and a second. Um, any other com questions or comments? All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Any opposed? All right, thank you very much. Um, in Mr. Connor's absence, is there anyone who would like to move ahead with this paving motion? Sure. Uh, paving estimates for joint roads to Abington Township. Make a motion to approve the paving estimates for joint roads agreement with Abington Township. This agreement would include the paving of Idle Road from York Road to New Bone Road to Washington <coughs> Avenue from York Road to Greenwood Avenue. The estimate to mill pave and place all pavement markings and traffic loops is approximately $40,000. Okay. I hear a second? Second. second. Okay. Any questions or comments on this one? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you very much. And go, moving on. Uh, 2017 paving project commission to advertise and mm -hmm. make a motion to advertise, authorize the advertisement of the 2017 paving program. Mm -hmm. Sure. Any, any questions or comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Mm -hmm. okay, thank you. And one more for revising chapter 156. Well, this is hard work. Yeah. Permission to review and revise Chapter 156 of the Borough Code. Make a motion to authorize the review and revision of Chapter 156 of the Borough Code. Okay. And um, do I hear a second? Second. second. Okay. And would you just remind us, um, Manager Locke, what this chapter is about? This chapter is about street and sidewalk. Okay. It was written in the 70s. Um, it's a little archaic. It uses a lot of terms that aren't in place anymore. And uh, it's very hard to enforce the you know, letter of the law is something that's just don't exist in it. Uh, it needs a lot of work. Right. Thank you very much. Yes. Just to clarify, any revisions that are uh, deemed to be needed in the code are all separate ordinances or separate votes or have to as an ordinance? Or, or is it all covered under this? For the students, I will. For the revisions that you made to Chapter 156. If I may, this is just authorizing the legal work to right. revise it, and then what will happen is they'll bring a new replacement ordinance. And then that can be okay. okay. That's what I thought. I just wanted to clarify. Yeah, so we're not revising the whole borough code, just oh, certain sections. Yeah. Just certain sections. Yeah. <coughs> all right, but all those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Okay, thank you very much. And finally, Council Carroll. And the last item is regarding um, the request to waive the UCC review and inspection costs. And I make a motion to reduce the school district's building permit fees 
to the borough's actual cost on the current proposed classroom expansion project. Okay, and um, Manager um, Bob, would you just comment on um, what that means in terms of the investment? Yes, Madam President, I wrote a memo that's in your drop box on this. Uh, the school district had requested a, a waiver of the inspection fees and plan review fees that are required by the state. Their project is going to cost $418,000 and it's going to take uh, eight weeks to, to be done. The permit application fees are based off the cost of the job. On some jobs like this, uh, they may save money by going with actual cost. The UCC permit fees are set to be fair and over the course of the fiscal year, it should be uh, revenue neutral. So you might issue a permit for $100, it actually costs us $400. But then when you get a big job that comes like this, you, know, you might make that money back. And it comes out of wash at the end of the year. So um, what I recommended was reducing it to actual cost. And I believe that the superintendent uh, was happy with that. We're going to talk to her tomorrow, so we'll bring this to her if it's approved. What it would limit it to, and I, and I was really taking a shot in the dark with this on what it would cost them. It's an estimate $3,600 is probably what it's going to cost them. I mean, it really is a shot in the dark. It's five hours a week inspecting for the eight weeks. We already spent six hours reviewing the plan so they could put it out and bid. So that was $474. Um, so, like I said, the total that they'll probably end up spending is close to $3,700, $3,679. Okay. So it would be a savings of $6,875 to the school district if an estimation comes out there. Right. Okay, great. It'll definitely be a savings of $9,000. Okay. Thank you. For, uh, for doing that. Okay. Um, Mr. Lewis, would you like to comment on the proposed expansion project? All right, thank you. What the record show you know. Um, under new business. Okay. Yes. Okay. I've got a group new business. Okay. Um, I'd like to open um, reading up to public comment again to discuss <coughs> our advertising for the selection of a new tax collector and a new tax auditor. Okay. So um, first we will open up the meeting to Public comment again, mm -hmm. um, and um, I don't think we need to second that. Do we? No, no, you just allow the opportunity. Right. See if there's an opportunity. Anyone's interested, then a motion is there. Okay, and so by by um, advertising for a new tax collector, you're not speaking of the elected position. No, no, no. this is Burkheimer yeah. that we use now, and uh, we've been disappointed not so much in there actual collection, but in the quality of the data that they share with us about tax lots, their ability to cross-reference the various bills, the sewer bills and the property tax bills to the owners, their ability to help us find businesses in the borough that aren't paying us, and the number of errors that have come up where um, businesses that were not actually in the borough were paying us, and so we ended up having to write six-figure checks to pay them back, so we've been disappointed. So. This is to um, look to see if perhaps there's a re good replacement for that. And then also um, the audit that can be done mm -hmm. um, of the various taxes that we collect, especially the business privilege tax. Um, we're looking for a new auditor uh, to make sure, again, to find businesses that are in the borough that we don't know about and make sure they do pay their taxes or um, that they pay them correctly. Questions or comments about this? I think it's important and probably it's overdue. At least we open up a conversation about how we can get a higher, improved service, quality service. Mm -hmm. So I'm in all favor of it. Right. Yes. I, I, I am as well, and your comment that's overdue was my question was when was the last time we did this? We just saw it. Before I was on council, I've been here. Mm -hmm. I mean, they have, a, they have a lot, they have a lot of accounts, so we're certainly not in the minority now. No, Burkhardt does it for an awful lot of people. Yeah. Um, just very straightforward things like associating a particular property tax bill with the parcel identifying information in the county database. Seems so 
mandatory for doing this and necessary for staff to be able to track down that someone should be paying us or if they sh uh, sh and or not or vice versa. We just, we can't get it. So do you want to put forward a motion? I do. If there's any any public, any other public comment on, about the, the question? Okay. Uh, okay. I thought that I moved that um, we advertise the uh, RFQ, so request for quotations for the tax collection and tax audit. Okay. Second. All right. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Very good. Um, we will. Um, I move that we enter into executive session. Um, a brief executive session to uh, for the discussion of uh, real estate. 